discovery reading today. We're going to be at the front room of the museum. Really excited today. We're going to be talking about some animals that you probably see. You just went on a hike in Utah. So these are kind of animals in our backyard, but maybe a little bit farther away. Um, but I'll read the titles of our books really quick and give people a chance to log on. The first book that we're going to read, and again, our books are going to be backwards, is Little Beaver and the Echo. And the next book that we're going to read is How the Chipmunk Got His Stripes. So these are the books we're going to be reading. For those who are just tuning in right now, these are going to be talking about animals that you probably see on a hike, on just a normal hike, maybe up the Provo River, Powell Creek, definitely like in the winter. So those are the animals that we're going to be talking about today. So let's get started. And again, anybody who's watching this not live in a little while, feel free still to comment your questions and put down anything that you have and we will get back to you and answer your comments. <clears throat> Okay, so this book again is Little Beaver and the Echo. It was written by Amy McDonald and Sarah Fox Davies, and we're reading it with permission from Figgy Star Publishing Company. Little Beaver lived all alone by the edge of a big pond. He didn't have any brothers, he didn't have any sisters. Worst of all, he didn't have any friends. One day, sitting by the side of the pond, he began to cry. He cried out loud. Then he cried out louder. Suddenly, he heard something very strange. On the other side of the pond, someone else was crying too. Little Beaver stopped crying and listened. The other crying stopped. Little Beaver was all alone again. Boo hoo, he said. Boo hoo, said the voice from across the pond. Wow, 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 said Little Beaver. Wow, 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 said the voice from across the pond. Little Beaver stopped crying. Hello, he called. Hello, said the voice from across the pond. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? asked the voice from across the pond. Little Beaver thought for a moment, I'm lonely, he said. I need a friend. I'm lonely, said the voice from across the pond. I need a friend. Little Beaver couldn't believe it. On the other side of the pond lived somebody else who was sad and needed a friend. He got right into his boat and set off to find him. It was a big pond. He paddled and paddled. Then he saw a young duck swimming in circles all by himself. I'm looking for someone who needs a friend, said Little Beaver. Was it you who was crying? I do need a friend, said the duck, but it wasn't me who was crying. I'll be your friend, said Little Beaver. Come with me. So the duck jumped into the boat. They paddled and paddled. Then they saw a young otter sliding up and down the bank all by himself. We're looking for someone who needs a friend, said Little Beaver. Was it you who was crying? I do need a friend, said the otter, but it wasn't me who was crying. We'll be your friends, said Little Beaver and the duck. Come with us. So the otter jumped into the boat. They paddled and paddled. Then they saw a young turtle sunning himself all alone on a rock. We're looking for someone who needs a friend, said Little Beaver. Was it you who was crying? I do need a friend, said the turtle, but it wasn't me who was crying. Well, we'll be your friends, said Little Beaver and the duck and the otter. Come with us. So the turtle jumped into the boat and they paddled and paddled until they came to the end of the pond. Here lived a wise old beaver in a mud house all alone. Little beaver told him how they had paddled all around the pond to find out who was crying. It wasn't the duck, he said. It wasn't the otter, and it wasn't the turtle. Who was it? It was the echo, said the wise old beaver. 
Where does he live? asked Little Beaver. On the other side of the pond, said the lying little beaver. No matter where you are, the echo is always across the pond from you. Why is he crying? said Little Beaver. When you are sad, the echo is sad, said the wise little beaver. When you are happy, the echo is happy too. But how can I find him and be his friend? asked Little Beaver. He doesn't have any friends, and neither do I. Except for me, said the duck, and me, said the otter, and me, said the turtle. <clears throat> Little Beaver looked surprised. Yes, he said, I have lots of friends now. And he was so happy that he said it again very loudly. I have lots of friends now. From across the pond, a voice answered him. I have lots of friends now. You see, said the wise old beaver, when you're happy, the echo is happy. When you have friends, he has friends too. Hooray, said, shouted the little beaver and the duck and the otter and the turtle all together. And the echo shouted back to them, hooray. Right, and that is the end of that book. So the first animal we're going to talk about is the beaver. I have one with me. I got to get him in my arms really fast. So, this is our beaver. He's just about the exact same color as the one in our book. Sorry, there's a few people talking in the back. But looking at this, oh, we'll give him one second to pass by. I think. And looking into this, you can look into his mouth. It looks like he only has incisors on the top that are big and orange. That's kind of a, a misnomer. When we talk about the beaver, we think about those two big buck teeth, but they actually have two big ones on the bottom too. So they have incisors on the top and incisors on the bottom. So looking at that fur normally, normally their colors are yellowish, brown. Here, we'll give them one second to pass by yellowish brown and as you can see a beaver is actually quite big about the whole size of my upper body beavers are awesome there used to be millions and millions in the united well not millions and millions but millions in the united states um they were pretty aggressively hunted for their pelt because it has this really unique color and it is pretty thick here in utah we also used to have a lot more we've lost some due to habitat loss and just um, competition for resources um, but the beaver is super important to the environment, especially to our river systems here in Utah. Without those little dams, our fish don't have these cool waters that are really calm to spawn and same thing for fish and many of these hatches that we see with our, um, our flies for those tiny fish. So the beaver create a big part of our river system and wetland system here in Utah. So this is great. And many of you know this already, but those two big front teeth that they're well, so well known for, they never stop growing. Never stop growing in their whole life. So that's a big reason why they constantly need to be chewing on wood and filing. Sometimes they'll grind their teeth together to file them down because they never stop growing. So this is our beaver. Yeah. Our second book is called How Chipmunk Got His Stripes, and it is by Joseph Bruchak and James Bruchak, and the pictures are done by Jose Arruego and Carnero Dewey, and we're reading this one with permission from Penguin House, Penguin Random House. One autumn day long ago, Bear was out walking. As he walked, he began to brag, I am Bear. I'm the biggest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am the strongest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am the loudest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am Bear. I can do anything. Yes, I can.
as soon as Bear said those words, a little voice spoke up from the ground. Can you really do anything? Bear looked down. He saw a little brown squirrel standing on his hind legs. Can you really do anything? The brown squirrel asked again. Bear stood up very tall. I am Bear. I can do anything. Yes, I can. Can you tell the sun not to rise tomorrow morning? Brown Squirrel asked. I've never tried that before, but I am Bear. I can do that. Yes, I can. Bear turned west to face the sun. It was time. It was the time when the sun always goes down. Bear stood up to his full height and spoke in a loud voice. Sun, do not come up tomorrow. At his words, the sun began to disappear behind the hills. You see, Bear said, Sun is afraid of me. He's running away. But will Sun come up tomorrow? Brown Squirrel asked. No, Bear answered, the sun will not come up. Then Bear turned to face east, the direction where the sun always used to come up. He sat down. The little brown squirrel sat down beside him. At that night, all that night, they did not sleep. All that night, Bear kept saying, the sun will not come up. Hmm. The sun will not come up. Hmm. But as the night went on, little brown squirrel began to say something too. He said these words, the sun is going to rise. Ooh, the sun is going to rise. And although the night, all through the night they sat there, one by one, other animals gathered around them, fox and wolf, deer and moose, rabbit and porcupine, hawk and owl, otter and beaver, frog and turtle, and even the little mice came. They wanted to see who would be right, bear or brown squirrel. This was what the other animals heard. The sun will not come up. Hmm. The sun is going to rise, woo. The sun will not come up. Hmm. The sun is going to rise, woo. Finally, it was just before dawn, the time when the sun always used to come up. Look, said Turtle, a little bit of red is starting to show. Yes, said Owl, I believe the sun will rise today. Bear only chanted louder. The sun will not come up. Hmm. But right next to him, Little Brown Squirrel piped up. The sun is going to rise. And the sun came up. The birds sang their welcoming songs. The bright light of the new day spread over the land. Everyone was happy except for one animal. That animal was Bear. He sat there with his head down and grumpy look on his face. The happiest animal of all was Little Brown Squirrel. The sun came up, he chirped. The sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up. Brown Squirrel was so happy he forgot what his wise old grandmother had told him when he was very young. Brown Squirrel, his grandmother had said, it is good to be right about something. But when someone else is wrong, it is not a good idea to tease them. Now little brown squirrel began to tease Bear. Bear is foolish, the sun came up. Bear is silly, the sun came up. Bear is stupid, the sun. Womp! Bear's big paw came down on Little Brown Squirrel. Pinning him to the ground, Bear leaned over and opened his huge mouth. Yes, Bear growled. The sun did come up. Yes, I do look foolish, but you will not live to see another sunrise. You will not ever tease anyone else ever again because I, Bear, am going to eat you. Brown Squirrel thought fast. You are right to eat me, he said. I was wrong to tease you. I would like to say that I'm sorry before you eat me, but you are pressing down on me so hard that I cannot say anything. I cannot say anything at all. I cannot even breathe. If you would lift up your paw just a little bit, then I could take a deep breath and apologize before you eat me. That is a good idea, Bear said. I would like to hear you apologize before I eat you. So Bear lifted up his paw, but instead of apologizing, Brown Squirrel ran. He ran as fast as he could to where the pile of stones where he had his home. He had a tunnel under those stones and a nice warm burrow deep underground. Little Brown Squirrel's grandmother stood there in the door waiting for him. Hurry, Brown Squirrel, she said. Hurry, hurry. Little Brown Squirrel dove for the door to his home, but Bear was faster than he looked. 
He grabbed for little brown squirrel with his big paw, very long, sharp claws, scratched. Oh, I don't think I showed this picture. Okay. Um, little brown squirrel dove for the door to his home, but Bear was faster than he looked. He grabbed little brown squirrel with his big paw. Bear's long, sharp claws stretched brown squirrel's back from the top of his head to the tip of his tail. But Brown Squirrel got away. Deep down in his burrow where Bear, where Bear couldn't get him, Brown Squirrel curled up next to his grandmother and slept all winter while those scratches on his back healed. When spring came again, Little Brown Squirrel came out of his hole and looked at himself. There were long pale stripes all the way down his back where Bear had scratched him. He was Brown Squirrel no longer. He was now Chipmunk, the striped one. That is how Chipmunk got his stripes. Ever since then, Chipmunk has been the first animal to get up every morning. As the sun rises, he swoops to the top of the tallest tree to sing his song. The sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up. And ever since there, Bear has been the last animal to get up. He doesn't like to hear Chipmunk's song. It reminds him, as it reminds us all, that no one, not even Bear, can do everything. Okay, we're gonna be talking about some animals that were just briefly mentioned in this book. I wanna talk about deer and I wanna talk about elk because those are probably the animals we see the most in Utah. So the most common deer that we see in Utah is the mule deer. This is a pelt from actually a white-tailed deer, but that coloration is pretty similar. It's pretty obvious to understand that when it's winter time, they're at a lower elevation. And when it's summertime, they're up in higher elevation, which is sometimes when we see them in the snow in our backyard or walking down our street. Maybe they're drinking out of your pool or your dog's bowl or something like that. They're in town a lot more in the winter. And part of the reason why they do this is because they're actively evading the cougar. The deer is the number one um, food source for the cougar. And so they're gonna avoid those. Every single year, elk and deer both shed their antlers which is really cool. And so this is actually elk horn or antlers, excuse me. But when you look really close, when they first come back, they have this velvet on them. This one's really thick. Normally when you look at deer or elk when they're in the wild, this is kind of patchy. It's not so perfect as this one. There might be a piece here, piece here, might even be flopping off a little bit, but underneath here is the antler. And so they're gonna make do that shed every single year. And if you're really lucky, sometimes if you're hiking, walking around, you might just see a pair of antlers on the ground like these ones and you could just pick them up. And those are called the shed. Okay, and then this is pretty big. I'll scoot back. This is our elk antler. Usually when we look at elk antlers, they have very much more even points on the side of their head. They normally have six on each side. They're a lot more even than the deer. The deer have a lot more variation in what their antlers look like, but they're much bigger than the, than the deer antler. And a bull elk, which is the boy, is normally about 700 pounds, and the cow can be four to 500 pounds. So these are much bigger than the, the deer. They are big animals, but they're really cool. The elk are also living at much higher elevation than the deer. So whereas you might see a deer in your backyard, the lowest elk really are is about 6,000 feet and they're in that 6,000 to 10,000 foot elevation range. So that is our, that is our elk. I think I got one more thing to share, let's see. Oh yeah, the last thing for elk and deer, we often wanna feed them and we often wanna have them in our backyard. One thing to consider is because deer, less so elk, but more so deer, come down and up in elevation with the season changes, their diet changes and they have a very distinct diet for the winter and a very distinct diet for the summer. So we have to be cautious when we put out certain seeds or saltlets because they are ruminants 
which is a type of animal they are. So it's like sheep and cow meaning that they have like cud and they chew up and spit up their food. So they need, their bodies actually need time to prepare for the next diet in the season. So we have to be super aware of that when we feed them because they can be very sick when that happens. Deer um, do not have as much to eat in the summer. They don't hibernate or anything like that. And so they can lose about 25% of their body weight in the winter. And during the day, 40% of their food consumption is actually just coming from their own body fat. So you have to think about that. But that is our discovery reading for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and we'll read them and answer back to you. Hope you guys have a great weekend and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks.